Good morning. I'm on my morning walk and I'm still thinking about anger and how a part of me is angry because I am dealing with the pain and the harm from other people. And if these people, just being honest, didn't harm me um, or didn't sit by while I was being harmed, right, then I wouldn't have this unprocessed anger. Um, I know that the healing work is mine, but I have to admit to myself that the initial harm that was caused to me is not my fault. That what happened to me should not have happened, right? Like, and I think what frustrates me sometimes is that we jump so far so quick and we're like, oh, well, you know, God allows everything and everything is usable and you know things happen for a reason like this kind of stuff that we say to each other that's kind of actually dismissive um and doesn't really deal with the harm especially like again in church culture where it's like you know we have to turn everything into a testimony and everything has to be beneficial and for the good right but it's like no some things are awful some things shouldn't have happened in the first place and a layer to my anger is the, the responsibility and the burden I feel because of the harm other people caused me. And that don't feel fair. If I'm just being honest, it doesn't feel fair. And that makes me angry. Like when I think about who I was before someone harmed me or who I was before someone put their hands on me or broke my heart or whatever the heck, right? Like even romantically. <laughs> Like I would be happy and content with myself and then I would get with, you know, partners who would make me feel like trash. And then I have to do all this rebuilding, you know, all this gathering back of myself because this person harmed me and destroyed my confidence and my self-esteem and all this stuff, right? And the weight of even having to do that while they get to go on living their merry lives, never having to face me, face the pain that they've caused me. And um, I was so afraid of being bitter, being difficult, <laughs> that I sometimes did not stick up for myself as I should have. And the communities around me were telling me that what I was experiencing, experiencing wasn't as serious and when I look back on it, I'm like, no, it was actually very serious. It was a violation. A lot of stuff that happened to me was a violation. Um, and I didn't have the privilege of having guidance in those times, protection in those times. Um, and I don't know if this is like, you know, but I hear a lot of black women talk about feeling unprotected and uncovered and unseen and unheard. And that's one level of frustration, but then we don't talk about how you being invisible set yourself up for harm, or not even set yourself up, how people choosing not to see you creates more room for you to be harmed and not to be held sacred, you know? Um, so I'm mad about that. I, my whole life, I wanted someone to come and save me. Ooh emotions I wanted to be saved I wanted to be seen as sacred and important enough to people to be protected and I thought to be protected I had to dim my own light I had to swallow my pain and my words because nobody wants to hear about that right like nobody wants to be inconvenienced and I thought that if I people pleased I could people please my way into safety you know, I could people please my way into protection and to, into being cherished. You know, that was my thought. Hold on one sec. And surprise, surprise, that didn't happen, right? This protection never came. This visibility never occurred. Um, yeah, and that broke my heart because I'm like, well, what is it about me? What am I doing wrong? Um, that people don't care, that people don't care about me. And for me, it's layered. 
I don't know if we talk enough about how unprotected children in general, the black girls feel when their fathers choose not to be in their lives. Like when their fathers make the choice to not be a part of their lives anymore and how much trauma and pain that causes that we don't talk about. Because a lot of the stuff that we go through in the black community and as black women are normal. Meaning, not, not saying that it's normal that it happens, but that it's too, um, it happens too frequently, right? And so we normalize things that shouldn't be normalized. And so a lot of us are starting off with a base level of pain and trauma that has not been validated um, because we just gotta get it going. We gotta, you know, when you're unfathered, you know that you're in it for yourself. You gotta make things happen for yourself. You have to protect yourself. You have to do what you gotta do. You know what I mean? And I feel like a lot of women make decisions they don't necessarily want to because of that, because they don't really have those options. Um, anywho, but <laughs> yeah, like specifically for people in my life that have harmed me, they don't have to deal with the repercussions of their actions. I do. They're, they get to live their merry life joyously I don't know what the heck they're doing maybe they're not joyous I have no idea but it, it, it it can feel that way that like they've saddled you with a weight of pain and then the shame around the pain you feel so there's so many layers you're angry you're hurt right you're hurt then you're angry because that hurt gets suppressed and gets downplayed you know what I'm saying sorry y'all I don't even know what I was saying I saw three dogs that were unleashed and I was like uh where's the owner anywho so what was I saying Yes, so these people that cause harm and pain are like causing harm. Like <laughs> they come in your house, they wreck your stuff. And then when you complain about your stuff being wrecked, they tell you that you're complaining too much or these are my experiences. They tell you that you're complaining of too much. Nobody wants to hear that. You're always so sad. Why are you always so sad? Um, like that person just didn't come in and cause harm. And so you start to feel like, well, maybe I am crazy. Am I doing too much? Maybe it is me, you know? And they don't care. <laughs> they don't care. And when I realize that a lot of the people who have harmed me don't care, that made me mad. Because I guess I care about how I make people feel. <laughs> I care about the harm that I've caused people, whether intentionally or unintentionally. You know what I mean? I don't seek to intentionally cause harm, but sometimes our intentions aren't what happened, you know? So I'm always open to critique and I hope to be open to critique, but a lot of people that harm me were not. Um, and so it made me feel crazy. Seriously, like it made me feel crazy. It made me feel like I was doing too much or I was too sensitive or whatever. And then for black women, we're expected to take pain anyway. <laughs> we're expected to suffer anyway. And so because suffering has been the lot that people expect us to accept. When we complain about that suffering, we're seen as ungrateful or wrong somehow. That somehow me expressing the pain that I have um, makes me a bad black woman, makes me a bitter black woman, an angry black woman. This like layer of misogyny and misogynoir that we've all experienced. So I guess a part of the anger that I have residing in my body, in my mind, and my heart is the anger of being unseen and uncared for. Um, the anger, the frustration I have and the annoyance I have around having to do all this heavy lifting and all this healing work alone, um, you know, alone with the pain that I have because it's so personal because other people don't care. The people that cause the harm don't care that's rough that's hard you know again that feeling no one's coming to save you not that I'm looking to be saved by other people but I just want to be cared about and I had to resolve to care more about myself um, than I do other people's feelings about the pain they cause me which is it's it's wild because as a people pleaser you're not only juggling your own pain and trauma but you're also juggling the shame and the pain of other people and trying not to trigger them. You're trying to protect them while also trying to heal and address and be confrontational. And then you're gaslit and told 
what you feel is not real or you know you're doing too much whatever is being told you know um see so yeah, so there's anger there <laughs> there's so many different layers of anger every time i pull, peel something back there's something more um yeah i don't know if this is helpful <laughs> to anyone i hope it is if anything it's cathartic for me to be able to actually put voice to how i really feel the frustration i feel um because being angry is burdensome it's a lot of work to manage and then sometimes you feel like you don't have the energy to deal with it to unearth all that stuff because when you do it ain't gonna be pretty right like so you need to have the space and time to not only express yourself but then to also um not only just to express yourself but to also be able to heal yourself too to be open for healing you know healing is a lot of work it takes a lot of energy it takes a lot of energy um it takes a lot of dedication and there are so many like unearthed you know i mean you know things i need to unearth that haven't been healed in me starting from childhood going back to that daddy wound right like this this man who made me, this man who was in my life, don't love me anymore. That doesn't make sense. And because so many fathers have left their children, you know, where it's it's taught to be normalized, but it's not normal. And so we don't know what to do with this pain and this trauma and this heartache and this deep wanting, this deep desire to be wanted, to be held, to be taken care of. You know what I mean? All my life, like, I had to look out for me because ain't nobody looking out for me and that brings on exhaustion you know that brings on overworking trying to anticipate trying to wait till the other shoe drops because it always drops you know what i'm saying like there's so much labor that i had to do as a child that I should not have to do should not have had to do there's so much labor that i have to do now because of the ills of other people and i think this is a call and a reflection for us to really consider how we talk to people what we do to people because the things that we do in a moment that we might not even be thinking about it, right? That person can leave another person with pain for the rest of their life that they're trying to figure out. You know what I'm saying? Like we really got to consider the weight of being a person, the weight of our words, the weight of our actions. You know what I'm saying? Like they're sacred. <laughs> we should we should do it with like, you know, the Bible talks about like the fear and trembling. But seriously, like the honor the honor, like considering uh, the heaviness, considering the impact I can have on the world around me. You know, we walk around like we're just like these isolated beings. No, everything we do has a consequence. Everything we do has a repercussion, good or bad. You know what I'm saying? Including like what we do can echo throughout the rest of people's lives after we have long gone, leaving them burdened leaving them harmed, leaving them sorting out things alone, you know, leaving them feeling invalidated, you know, so, yeah, I, again, I'm just talking, I'm just processing, um, and I'm hoping that what I'm saying is coming through clear, and that somebody can feel me on this, but, yeah, being abandoned by the people who hurt you, um, it's hard. It hurts. It's heavy. It makes me angry. But I have to clean up their mess, essentially. I gotta clean up their mess while they get to, out of choice, live rep repercussion free. You know, and it's not as simple as like, oh, just don't think about them no more. Just don't, you know, people always, I think they mean well when they say it. They don't want to see us suffer. But you telling me to not think about something that has traumatized me is not helping me. <laughs> you telling me to get over something is not helping me. Um, and so that's why a lot of times I keep my pain secret. I keep it close to my chest, which I'm learning not to do that anymore. I just gotta find safe, pace, safe spaces, excuse me, to express myself. Because holding it in is not saving me. It's not saving nobody. And even the times that I had the opportunity to stand up for myself to other people, they just weren't safe. They just, I'm in relationship with people that if I tell them they harm me, they care about me enough so we can actually have a conversation.
but a lot of people I was in a uh, relationship with were not safe people. <laughs> and they had their own shame and guilt to deal with. Maybe I, me calling them out and not even in a mean way, like, hey, when you said this, what did you mean? That really hurt my feelings. You know what I mean? But some people don't have the maturity, you know what I'm saying? To deal with that, to deal with critique, you know? Or maybe it's not even, tr uh, what is it, maturity? Maybe it's just like, they have shame and guilt around uh, things that they do wrong. But I know I'm human, I'm fallible. I know I'm gonna mess up and I, I want to be a safe person so people can come to me and tell me, you know? And so they don't have to deal with that saddled weight alone. And that's the thing, like even in scripture, like we always wanna talk about, well, this, it's the work for you to do. In scripture, we're not supposed to do work alone. We're supposed to be a community. Um, we're supposed to be, <laughs> ideally. We're supposed to be a community. And in community, you're gonna have conflict and disagreements. And sometimes you're gonna hurt people's feelings and not even on purpose. And maybe people do hurt people's feelings on purpose, but there's supposed to be room for repair, conflict resolution, you know, making amends, all those different things. But here in this culture, we're so um, consequence averse. Like people get off for the most heinous things. You know, a lot of people don't get justice. Never. Um, for the big things, and everything is big, but for the big things and the small things. And so that's infuriating. <laughs> like we see people, you know, getting off of crimes that we obviously know they did. And it just reaffirms, it, re, it reaffirms people who seek to do wrong, who will at no point face any consequences. And that's reflected, it trickles down into our lives. People are consequence averse. Everyone want to talk about accountability. It's annoying because y'all don't really know what accountability is. But anyway, that's another conversation for another day. But yeah, your anger is justified. I feel you. I get it. Insane. I'm going to continue my walk. Love you.